Now we have installed the Giants editor, we can launch the program by going to Start, All Programs, Giants Software. To help us find our way around the user interface, we will now load a file, a simple scene with a cube. By clicking on the file link below the video player, you can download all the files you need for this tutorial in one convenient zip archive. After the download has finished, we can then copy the archive to our desktop and unpack the contents. In the newly created folder we find the file cube underscore scene 01 i3d. The Giants engine has its own file format, the i3d format. i3d files are written in XML format. In addition, there's also an i3d shapes file. This file contains all the data for the three-dimensional objects that are used in the i3d file. Now bring up the Giants editor and use the File Open menu in the top left corner to navigate to the newly created folder and open the cube underscore scene 01 i3d file. The Giants editor itself is divided into several different areas. At the top, as usual, is the menu bar. On the left is the scene graph. Here we can see all the objects in our scene, the cube, the plane, and so on. The large area in the middle here is called the viewport and shows the currently loaded scene. In other words, we see what the active camera has in its field of vision. Then on the right-hand side, we have the attributes. If this panel is not visible, you may need to enable it through the option in the menu, Window, Attributes. The menu has many more panels to choose from, but we will learn about those in later tutorials. If we choose an object in the scene graph, for example the cube, we can see its attributes here. This includes information on its transformation properties, which dictate where the element can be found in the world, its rotation and scale, whether the object is visible, and much, much more. Below is the status bar, where we have a breakdown of what has loaded, any errors that have occurred, and other relevant information. When in the viewport, we can move the camera to look around the scene. First, we go into Menu, View, Framed Rotate, and switch it off. Now we can rotate the camera by holding down the Alt key and left mouse button. With the Alt key and the right mouse button, we can zoom in and out. And with the Alt key and the middle mouse button, we can move the camera up, down, and from side to side. Going back to Menu, View, Framed Rotate and switching it back on will change the function of the camera so that it will now orbit its focal point. By holding down Alt and the left mouse button, we can then rotate around the point that the camera is viewing by moving the mouse. This is especially useful for when we want to take a closer look at an object and examine it from every angle. Now, using the cube here as an example, let's change the camera's focal point or target. First, click on the cube in the scene graph. Then hold the mouse over the viewport and press the F key. This focuses the camera on our cube. With the camera now on our cube, we can zoom in and out or rotate around the object. In our current scene, we don't really need to move the camera very far, but when designing a map, being able to increase the speed of the camera's movement is especially useful, letting us cover large distances in less time. To alter the camera's movement speed, use the plus and minus keys of the numpad. A selected object will always be shown in the viewport with a transformation schizmo. With this, we can manipulate the object, dragging the arrows with the left mouse button to move it around the world. And we can rotate it by turning the rings of the gizmo here. As we can see in the Attributes panel, the values in the object's transformation attributes have changed. We are also able to control the selected object with these values. For example, here we can reset the rotation back to zero. And as we can see, the cube is now parallel to the plane again. If we enter a translation of 1 meter in the y-axis, the cube will then hover above the plane. 
Now that we have covered the basics of the editor, the following tutorials will explain on what we have learned so far as we create our first map.